another video episode of my podcast. My name is Cheryl and this is Cappuccino Crafts, my little channel on YouTube and my corner of the general interwebs where I like to talk about knitting and sometimes crochet and books and TV and movies and other life and chatty things that I want to share with you. Thank you so much for choosing to watch this video and spend a little bit of your time with me. I really hope that you enjoy it. Welcome and please settle in, get yourself a delicious beverage and let's enjoy a lovely visit. And yes, it is another Monday in March. Uh, it is the 29th of March, so we're almost done and um, April is coming and Easter is coming and today is a really pretty sunny day with some white fluffy clouds and yeah I hope that you are doing well and let's get to the crafting here is my Holly Cowl. The name of the pattern is Holly. It is by Nancy Ricci. And I am knitting it with this lovely yarn from Lady Dye Yarns in the Suffragette colorway. And this came in a mini kit, a printout of the pattern and um, a 50 gram, so a half skein of yarn dyed by Lady Dye Yarns in this colorway. It was the second part of the um, bundle or the kit that I got last year that was uh, an election themed like get out the vote uh, kit with a shawl. Um, so I am enjoying this and I'm just going to knit for a little bit while I talk. This is the last row before I start the ribbing and finish. So very, very close to finishing this really pretty cowl. And I am probably going to get out my blanket, my crochet scrap blanket, and do a few stripes while I still think about what my next um, project that I cast on is going to be. Um, it was a busy week this week, so I didn't have a lot of time or brain space for choosing and planning new projects. Um, how's your crafting going? Um, I'd love to hear about what your current projects are um, and chat with you about them in the comments below the video or what you're reading. I'd love to hear about the books that you're reading and how you're enjoying them. Um, yeah. So this has been all the crafting. I, um, the only crafting I've been doing all week. Um, so on to books. Books are really good too. Um, and I had some finish. No, I haven't actually finished since last week. But, um, or did I? I should have looked more carefully before I started filming. But I really wanted to start filming a video 
and I I didn't make my notes like I usually do. That probably wasn't a great idea. Um, but this morning I have been continuing to read more in Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, which is an epic fantasy uh, based in like an ancient Mesoamerican kind of culture like Aztec or Maya or Inca. I'm not sure specifically what culture she's borrowing from, but um, it's that that kind of setting and it's really really well written i'm really enjoying it and there is the part of the story she has set up like a ticking time clock they have um they have a mission to complete before the solstice and this is not just a average solstice there is an an eclipse on this eclipse of the sun on this solstice and so that is everything's everybody's kind of preparing for that and a lot of plans and politics and things are gonna collide um, and there is a siren or half siren pirate who's trying to get uh, a, a religious um, figure who is supposed to become the incarnation of the old crow god on the eclipse so he has to get she has to get him across across the sea and to the religious city and the temple before that eclipse happens and yeah i am really excited and it's very very good yeah and i am reading two other books i am reading the haunting of tram car 015 by p jelly clark this is a like fantasy almost with a sci-fi feel because it's a little bit it's not really steampunk it's magic based, but it feels a little bit steampunk um, in an alternative history Cairo. And it is so fun. It's like solving crimes with the paranormal investigation service. And there is a very haunted tram car. Um, yeah yeah i'm like two-thirds of the way done and and it's been really good i am also uh in the middle of the widow of rose house yeah sorry looking down i did take a little break and i wrote some notes um to help me get through the rest of this recording so the widow of rose house and it is, I expected it to be like a kind of gothic thrillery with a little bit of romance. And it is very much a, gen a genre romance. And the spooky gothicness is a little less than I wanted. Um... But there is kind of a dramatic story. The widow, um, what 
she was in a very, very abusive marriage that she was able to um, get out of. Uh, and then, um, like, within a year, he was murdered. And so she has kind of a traumatic history. And um, she's trying to... Um, make a new life for herself and kind of dig out of that past and create something of her own with this new house that seems to be haunted. Um, yeah. So she has invited uh, kind of, this is set in Victorian times. So it's like 19th century. And... Um, so there is a 19th century, like, kind of genius scientist inventor who is very interested in the paranormal. So he is going to do a paranormal investigation to see it, if anything can be done about the haunting. And so, yeah, there's definitely an attraction between her and the um, genius inventor scientist um and it's got i don't know i'm sometimes I, i'm iffy about the tone of it um and it's i feel like i expected something just a little different but i want to finish it and see um i'm interested enough i'm not like i'm not actively disliking it I'm just slightly disappointed but interested still yeah so that's the widow of Rose house by Diana Biller those are my current reads and I did finish the two books I was talking about so much last week I think that's why I didn't feel like I finished anything this week because those were so close to being done. And I talked a lot about them in the last video. Um, but I did finish One Night Stand in a Qualuit by Felicia Mahali. And, spoiler alert, by Olivia Dade. And One Night Stand in a Qualuit is very much kind of a... A literary fiction um, kind of drama story uh, with a love story element um, but it is very like literary drama and uh, spoiler alert is very much a geeky nerdy rom-com fun but I did find a connection between these two books um, and the couples that they were um, following. Both couples had secrets that they were withholding and um, some trauma in their past. And in spoiler alert, it was... Um, it was incorporated into more of the rom-com feel, but it kind of grounded the rom-com and um, made it, you know, a little less fluffy and a little more, um, but it still kept the rom-com tone in general, um, but it really added a lot to the character development and it, meant a lot for the representation like there was dyslexia representation representation and also um it talked a lot about um fat representation or plus size and body shaming and um body positivity and those kind of issues which i really appreciated uh, one night stand the trauma like was very very dark and dramatic and the secrets were more serious and dealt with in a more serious way and the couple 
you know, in a genre romance, like, spoiler alert, you are always supposed to be able to root for the couple. And the rule is for a genre romance that you have a happy ending or at least a happy for now. Happy ever after or a happy for now. Um, in the, like, literary drama, you don't there may be a love story incorporated or some kind of a relationship, a romantic relationship, but you're not necessarily one you're super rooting for. And you're definitely not ever guaranteed in the literary drama um, that there will be any happy ever after. Um, and that was definitely true with One Night Stand in Iqaluit and the traumas and the secrets that they had. Um, these were not necessarily likable characters. And I had some problems with how they were so secretive and withholding and not emotionally present for each other. Um, but also the couple, while it was important in the story, um, the scope of the book was very much also generally looking at the many communities in the Arctic city of Iqaluit and also um, delving into some of the history of Arctic exploration and colonization as it became, you know, Canada and Europeans came and settled in the Canadian Arctic. So there was, there was a lot. And I really liked both books. I felt, um, yeah, I really enjoyed both of them. And I found the combination of very different characters and very different relationships, but they both were, they both had to deal with some secrets that they were holding back. And um, that was dealt with in each book very, very differently. Um, but I did find that little connection and I thought that was interesting. Um, so that is all the reading to talk about. And I haven't been watching anything. Like I said, it was a busy week. Um, and so I wasn't really watching anything except, you know, some YouTube on the background um, to keep me company while I was doing other stuff. And... <laughs> So I hope that you are doing very well. I hope that wherever you are, you and your family and all of your loved ones are well and safe. And um, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.